Welcome to Our Jackson Home, Front Porch Discussions Without the Front Porch. I'm here joined at the board by my partner and Mike, Luke Pruitt. How are you doing, Luke? I'm great, Jim. How are you doing? Yes, I'm still dealing with the cold. It is getting close to winter time here, and the colors on the trees are changing, and uh, the leaves are getting red. And speaking of red, we've also got a guest here today, a special musical guest, Aaron and Alice Harden are here in the studio with Woo-hoo! us today. Hey, can we talk about Walnut uh, Street's trees real quick for a second before we let Alice introduce okay, herself? Okay, well, let's talk about the trees for a second that the audience cannot see, our, our but hopefully we can describe well is, enough. Our uh, studio immersed in some beautiful trees. I want to give yes. Midtown Jackson a yes, shout Yes, we're out immersed in trees. We're, we're actually broadcasting from a tree house. That's right. So Which, it's kind of devious, yeah. the front porch. It's yes, actually yes. more of a uh, treehouse It was a bit show. of a climb to get up here this morning. But hey, we do have Alice and Aaron here with us this morning. Good to see Hi. y'all. Hi. Hello. <laughs> What's up? <laughs> How's everybody? We're doing In great. the internet yes. world. God, I just... So Alice and Aaron are good friends of ours. We'll go ahead and put that out there. But I still mm-hmm. get a little starstruck. I... I I feel like we've arrived. That because of the star-shaped seven. sunglasses that I wear. Yes, I've, s- I've seen the bruises. Could you, from the could you take your sunglasses off? It's oh. a little pretentious. <laughs> <laughs> I joke. Alice did not have sunglasses on in the studio this morning. No, but Luke does. <laughs> because good. he figures when you're cool, the sun shines on you 24 hours a day. That's right. Got to keep right, your body so though. Alice. <laughs> yes. Where do you hail from? Well, I'm glad you asked, Lucas. Um, I am from a little town called Raytown, Missouri. If you've seen the show Mama's Family, that's where it was set. Wow. Um, it is a suburb, though, of the greater metropolis of Kansas City, Missouri. The Royals. Yeah, let's talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> it was a great run. It was a good run. We enjoyed it. Gave, they gave the city some life. Uh and so, how did you how did you make it from uh, KC to uh, West Tennessee? Um, I came down to Jackson because of well, um, I met a camp counselor that went to Union University when I was in high school, and he told me that it was cool. And so I came down to visit, and I stayed with who one girl who is now one of my best friends in her dorm in. Um, I liked the dorm rooms. They were as if they were apartments, and so I decided I liked it here. And now I'm here in Jackson because I love the community. And wow. so, yeah, I've been and here for Aaron, 12. And you didn't originate here either, did you? No, I mean, I'm from uh, a town called Brighton, Tennessee, so it's West Tennessee. Um, and it's kind of a small town, kind of boring, but I had a youth pastor that right. went to Union, and so that's how I got on the Union train, too. So I'm wondering what you guys thought, especially since, I mean, you came from a small town, and you came from a slightly larger town probably than Jackson. When you guys came here, what were you expecting to find? Were you expecting to uh, – there's a stigma – of if someone moves from a larger city to the south, they have that stigma in their head from every southern movie they've seen in their heads. Will they be wearing shoes? Do they have plumbing? And uh, was there any stigma coming down here to Jackson? Did you? What did you expect to find when you hit Jackson? I don't know if I'm. Aaron just handed me the microphone like it had Ebola on it. But um, <laughs> oh, <my>. topical <laughs> because Brighton really stigmatizes. Yeah, yeah, totally. <laughs> <laughs> You're not moving up. Um, <laughs> I think um, I didn't really have a lot. I didn't. I'm not the expectations type. I didn't even know Tennessee had a football team. I was just. Uh, I didn't know. Well, for some people, uh, they still don't have a football uh, team. Wah, wah, wah. Wait, is, is Kansas City a southern city? Is it a midwest? Midwestern. Okay. We're known for our non-regional dialect. I bet you all That's couldn't right. guess where I was from if I hadn't told you. Ooh, <laughs> so you don't feel like uh, the southern dialect has affected you being here. Oh, yeah, totally. Well, maybe. Mm. My friends tell me that it has, but that's a great question. When you go back home. Yes, of course. Well, okay, so (laughs) you're a musician, and we love your music. Uh How how did you become a musician? Have you always been an artist? Mm -hmm. Have you always been drawn to art? Yeah, well, 
I can't say I ever really wrote until I saw Aaron. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> he was her muse. Yes. Mm-hmm. I love it. <laughs> nothing about oh, nothing about him I can't write on. No. <laughs> <laughs> she saw those. She looked at him so intimately when he said that. It was, uh... She saw those glasses and yeah. just thought, "You deserve a song." Uh-huh, that's right. Yep. Um, no, I I have a vague memory of being young and outside of my house and writing a song for my brother. To the tune of Wherever you go Whatever you do So I wrote up words to that wow. So How old are you? I was probably It was it was pre-seven <laughs> So yeah Did, Jim, have you found this on the internet? Dug that <laughs> no, no Pretty sure that one has not hit I'd have internet. to take a trip back through time <laughs> To find that one Why haven't you done that, Jim? Come on Ah, uh, well, I gotta feel the machine you know, so. <laughs> That's what's keeping him from executive producer The DeLorean just, Yeah, yeah. <laughs> So, Aaron, you also play guitar, too I mean, wh- when did you start playing guitar? Uh, let's see. I was I started at about ten years old, and everybody in my family plays music. So it's just you don't really have anything else to do when you live in small towns but play music. So I just came up playing music, and uh, always had an affinity for picking up instruments. So and my dad also. I mean, my dad used to tour and play in the seventies, and uh, was played professionally for a while and opened up for some really big bands. So did you make a CD before you met Alice? Oh uh, no, huh? Uh, I had mostly just been independent. I hadn't played with a lot of different groups and bands. Um, so whenever we worked on Alice's first CD, that was the first time I'd played on a CD. Cool. So, so what happens in this gap from seven years old writing a song about your brother to uh, Aaron becoming your muse? Where, where <laughs> do you see uh, your art coming from? Who are you being influenced by before you become Alice Harden in the New Delta payroll? Well, I didn't start playing guitar until I was 15 because I quit volleyball and mom said I had to do something. <laughs> so I, I started playing guitar. And obviously, if you're in church as a young 15 year old, the next step is you will play music for the church. Right. And so I started playing worship songs. And um, some of my big influences were Jennifer Knapp and Lori Chaffer and from Waterdeep, which is a Kansas City band. They wrote some good worship songs. And. Um, um, pretty much anything I listened to I would like it or find something that I liked but then um, I went off to college and I played my songs at Union where everybody was the worship leader in their youth group and I felt like I didn't have a whole lot to add to the, the bucket but um, I so I would I didn't write a whole lot and then I graduated <laughs> where, where has um, people have always known that Alice was extremely talented and uh, was great at music, I feel like, That's th- cool. throughout your union career. But mm-hmm. I, I don't feel like you always have necessarily loved wanting to pursue art. What what in mm-hmm. recent years has kind of given you confidence mm-hmm. to go, I'm going to go for this dang thing? Um, okay, that's a great question, Luke. Um, okay, so about... Uh, 2007, I uh, I had a really good friend in Nashville that I actually went to high school with in Kansas City, and he offered to record a four song EP for me called Four Leaves. It's on iTunes. You, you can buy it there. And um, <laughs> so I um did that, and that Aaron actually plays on the last song on that. I think Jesse James, and we had. We, we had scheduled our first date. Um, wow. Yeah, so that's a bit of history for you. But um, anyway, uh, so after that, I really, I think, got nervous about being in front of people. And I think you're right. Like, I didn't really see how, uh, I don't know. It's kind of like a war of you know that you have talent, but you don't want to show off. And so I was kind of going back and forth, and the anxiety got high, and I just kind of gave up and crumbled. <laughs> but I think that's completely natural, because remember what happened to Garth Brooks when he tried to become Chris Gaines? <laughs> 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 There's always that point where you're saying, "Am what I doing as is what I'm doing going to last? Is it good enough?" What all artists change, and it gets. I think it gets like kind of like nerve wracking when you see yourself evolving, and you're like, "Is this the right thing I'm supposed to be doing?" Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, no, you're making a good point. And um, 
while I haven't explored my Chris Gaines side, um, no tough. wigs. <laughs> it might come. Who knows? He's more like weight gains. <laughs> weight gains. <laughs> oh, I haven't seen Garth, but I hear I hear he's a great guy. <laughs> for for life, Garth. But um, anyway, yeah, I I uh, I think it was a few years of nannying and being lonely at my house <laughs> and I just started to I think uh to just um uh, developmentally like I've heard that the female brain fully f- forms at 25 oh. <laughs> and um I think that there's just some transition that happens in your head and I just was going through that and so um <laughs> and I uh when I was I went through a lot of spiritual growth too I would say and then um around 28 29 I was like you know if I die and I haven't given this everything I will be sad and that was kind of what it came down to is like this sort of existential like this is one thing I enjoy and I'm not doing it why not and so I did it and um yeah so uh then I would say I, I got some coaching from some good friends that really told me that it's okay to like what you do and um that was kind of freeing for me I needed someone to say that I guess <laughs> you know a lot of people probably thought it but no one really had said it to me in a way that I'd heard and um so yeah and then I just started writing for fun and I wrote some songs that I liked so here we are <laughs> it's it's amazing how in the Kierkegaardian struggle of trying to find meaning in our life People are just waiting for affirmation, and it's so funny how you can spend time waiting and and never receive. So I'm so thankful that y'all have been long on staying in Jackson and that Mm -hmm. that affirmation found you here. So last question before we head into break. How's it been um, playing music as a married couple? Did that start from kind of the beginning of your dating relationship, and and what's that like? Yeah, uh, so I had always been kind of sweet on Alice when we were in school, but it wasn't until we started uh, playing music together. She needed a mandolin player because we were doing more like a bluegrassy folk thing then. And so um, she asked me if I would play. And so uh, the very beginning of our relationship was surrounded by music. And, And Alice said something to me really interesting before I started playing with her that I'll like never forget. She said, there's something that happens in when you're playing music with somebody there's an intimacy that develops there when you play music with another person um and you said that yeah um and that always stuck with me and it's true um there's a certain kindredness that happens there and opens the avenue for um a certain intimacy not necessarily male female kind of intimacy or whatever but just intimacy and so i think that began our relationship and has always been intertwined in our relationship but there's definitely been spells to where we haven't played music together for even years you know um that we've just been a married couple um but it definitely is a different dynamic because you uh a marriage sometimes is about roles you know like it, it's it's fully equal um the husband and the wife are both fully equal benefactors in the relationship and both fully equally give to one another. Um, but I think when I, what I've learned is that like the roles that we are taking in our marriage, like when it comes to the music and playing music, like I fully submit to what Alice wants to do and what she feels about things. And I have to hold my tongue a lot of times when I disagree, but it's just like, this is your craft. This is your show. Like I am support staff And so I think after I realized that and I stopped trying to take hold of everything out of a protectiveness, um, it allowed me to have more freedom in the music and allowed her to really uh, solidify her vision. And I think this new album is the uh, solidification of a lot of Alice's vision mixed with some other people's vision, um, some good producers and things like that. Um, so it was actually very affirming for me to say, oh, well, by letting go and letting her do what she's going to do and just supporting that, um, it's going to be even better than I could have imagined it to be, you know. So, uh, yeah, it, it's a, it's definitely a, a different space to have a relationship with, but uh, a really fun one as well, really excellent thing to do. Beautifully said. I see why he's your muse. It, it's just... Totally. 
profound. I well, wrote like 15 songs while I was talking. <laughs> <That's> crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Alice and Aaron and their band, the New Delta Payroll, have a new album out, and we'll be back to talk more about it and to hear original songs from them on our Jackson home. Welcome back to our Jackson home. We're here with Aaron and Alice Harden. Now, you've recently uh, had a new album come out. Is that right? That is correct, Jim. Yes. How was it recording that new album, Alice? <laughs> well, three words come to mind. Blood, <laughs> sweat, and tears. <laughs> I'm just joking. Yeah, but you can oh, wipe sorry. that off <laughs> if you purchase an album. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Um, no, no. It was great. Um so this was my second time to record, but it was my first time in a real, like, studio, studio. And um, so we went to uh, Muscle Shoals, Alabama, mm -hmm. and <laughs> actually Sheridan, which is right outside of Muscle Shoals, but nobody really knows where that is. So Sheffield. Yeah, I was thinking Sheffield's of Cold Water Books, right? Or oh, that's yeah. in cold water. Yeah. Totally. <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> yeah, it's my favorite. Um, no, but uh, we had the extreme opportunity to uh, get to play um, alongside Cheyenne Metters, who is a, he was voted one of the top guitar players in Nashville and um, a good friend of our, ours. And um, Alabama Shakes? Uh, no, no, no. Um, I'm getting there. <laughs> yeah, work there, work there. <laughs> yeah, and um, our album was produced by L. Jackson local, Joe the Colonel Garner, and he's also our next door neighbor. <laughs> he's our, um, what's the guy on um, on Home Improvement, the guy that looks over the fence? Wilson. He's our Wilson. <laughs> <laughs> he looks over the fence. And, um, then, and he's also an extremely talented musician, incredibly creative and encouraging and inspiring. Hey, in. your first uh, time in the studio, I mean, usually uh -huh. uh, people, uh, artists, when they're first time in the studio, they get nervous because it's not like they just set the microphones and everybody plays, right? They record the song, and then they record the drums, and then record the guitar. Was it in parts well, like that? Or? It depends on how you want to do it. Like, we, um, we all were in separate areas of the room. Like, I was in a booth by myself because of my singing voice being loud and then the guys um the other band members were all in a big room with high ceilings and we would record all together right Aaron's nodding at me yes <laughs> they might be able to and um he's nodding at me yes and no, <laughs> no I don't know. and um I and then we all recorded together and then you listen to it and if you like it you go again or don't yeah, um, cause you can do the multi-tracking, and, and we definitely overdubbed different things, but for the majority of what's on the recording, we actually recorded all at the same time. Um, and, y yeah, when you do, uh, when you have a space that's, that's, you know, sound deadened in the way that you can all play at the same time and together, you can capture a certain energy that is you know it's arguably a lot harder to do when you do one track at a time um and so you know we did drums bass usually one or two guitars um and vocals all at the same stab and then we just piled on the goodies on top of that right it's it's it sounds like a uh, it, it's a much richer sound in my opinion i mean other people have other opinions but when you listen to those old time records where they were all in the same room because they all had to get in close to the mic so the little needle to press into the vinyl record. It's just got like a richer sound. Uh, a lot of modern music now, you can tell the parts almost like they're inserted like Legos to make a yeah. new... Yeah, I definitely think there's, you know, like... Well, I'm, it's fine. I'm not doing anything. Uh, <laughs> there's, a, there's a... There's an energy that... that I don't really know how to quantify it. That just happens um, whenever you can get everybody in the pocket together, you know, at the yeah. same time, you know, and uh, it just has a more natural, I feel like it has a more natural um, feel to it, you know. But when you've played the same song 15 times, it, you have to keep that energy up. And um, that was something that Joe and um, the guy who was engineering were really good at keeping the 
energy up for us. Ben Tanner is um, was the guy who um, master no mixed in it and recorded. He mixed it as well. And that Lego thing you were talking about, oh, yeah. that's a lot. And just the way that they work the levels of the sound and the way that it hits your ear. It's the weirdest thing. He, um, We would play a drum cymbal and um, Ben would get into the computer and reverse the sound of the drum cymbal. So oh, it, instead cool. of going, shh, it would go shh, shh, like that. And uh, you would have like this weird thing that you would have not thought of <laughs> acting as a uh, atmosphere type thing. And so... Uh, yeah, but uh, it was great. It was great. Cheyenne Metters was awesome in there, and I mean, I think we all had. We were just excited. So. And as far as helped. how the songs came about, are are they written by you? How do, mm-hmm. how does that process begin? Yeah. You? So every song was written by me. Um, the title song Tennessee River was written probably um, just an idea that I recorded on my phone, and I liked the melody. And I put it away, and then I came back to it later, and totally rewrote this the lyrics. Actually, I wrote it. I wrote the m- one melody on my way down. T- I was driving from Missouri to Tennessee, um, listening to an A. A. Bondi song off of a Day Trotter ses- session, and I, <laughs> I just got this idea, and I sang it for Aaron. And he was like, "That's not good." <laughs> <laughs> He's like, it's kind of, and I was like, what about this? And then it turned into something else and something wow. else. And uh, and then the Grand Canyon song that just all morphed, um, it, just playing it over and over again. Mm. But my favorite song on the album is the Mama, You're Not Guilty, because mm. um, I wrote that maybe two days before we went to the studio for the last wow. time. And it, we really worked on it in the studio, and that was just a lot of fun to collaborate. And there's so much awesome uh, energy that comes out of collaborating if you're in the mood for it. <laughs> I, I, we were at the um, album release party at Alba Coffee. Mm-hmm. Shout out to downtown cool. Alba Coffee. Yeah. And I, I was really moved by that song. And um, one, Aaron plays some killer guitar riffs on he that. Totally it's, killed it. It was awesome. And just uh, so, so singer, songwriter, band making is is kind of modern poetry and it's so neat to see it come together in a collaborative process but when you're writing do you start with a conceptual idea like with that song are you starting with a theme that you're writing from or is it a phrase that kind of uh, begins it what what, what inspires your writing <laughs> oh I don't know it's always different I wish I had something it's mostly just being consistent and showing up and trying to be creative that day um, I do typically try to write just out my thoughts and let let it happen and m- my friend Joy Moore who is a really awesome poet here in Jackson yes. she um, always encourages me to uh, let the song become what it is instead of trying to force it. And so even if I have a concept, I try to hold that loosely and let it kind of turn into whatever it is. So I had a idea about mommy guilt and I could have written a five page paper about it, <laughs> you know, but that it just was better. Um, it was kind of formed around a Tom Waits song that I really, really liked too, called um, Hold On. And it's kind of got that same kind of feel and it's not a lot of words. So Sometimes you don't have to say a whole lot. As, as we were talking during the break, you use your maiden name as your stage name. You're Alice Calvary. Mm-hmm. And um, there's been some progression with the band. Kind of uh, where are y'all in that process right now? Yeah, yeah. Well, I think after Aaron and I got married, uh, there was some question about, will you be Alice Harden or Alice Calvary when you play music? And that might have played into my anxiety. of, I'm just not going to play music in front of people. <laughs> I don't want to make a decision um but i did um we we ended up going with alice <laughs> like madonna i don't think i'm like madonna but uh, alice and then I, d- I just get a real madonna feel <laughs> yeah. from your music yeah my my maternity sweater is giving it away <laughs> um <laughs> so i um I, we went with alice and um our buddy jacob vandiver who plays bass with us he said his friend had a dream that we were called the new Delta payroll. And we said, that's a cool band name. So we were Alice in the new Delta payroll for a while. Cause I had just started playing with a band with drums and a bass and an electric guitar electric. And, um, I thought that we would try that, but it just ended up being that our band was changing all the time. And 
we just went with the old stage name, Alice Calvary. <laughs> Love it. Because I continue. I mean, Aaron's always here. He doesn't need it. You don't want to be announced necessarily, do you? Alice Calvary and Aaron Harden. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't have quite the same ring. <laughs> that furry man. <laughs> Something else you guys did a while back that I found really cool. It's like in the old vaudeville days, the uh, uh, the Marx Brothers, for instance, they would go to different stages around the nation and hone their comedy until they came up with uh, the really crisp, tight routines. And you guys went on a home show tour where you would go to people's living rooms and dens and front porches and and you just played for people around the country. What was that like? Uh that that's some of my favorite touring like to do, especially and this is kind of going back to the first segment talking about um being married to the person you play music with. Um like we have an advantage sometimes cuz we can load up together and go wherever, you know, and if we load we can bring our dogs with us sometimes. We just kind of all pile in and go on tour, you know? Um, and so it's kind of fun to take your family where your fun is, you know? Um, but yeah, the house show thing we did, um, we did one run all the way kind of up the East coast a bit, all the way up to New York city and then back across to Columbus, Ohio. And then we went back South and then came back home so we did like this big roundabout tour um but those experiences are really cool because in a, in someone's living room or like in a tiny loft in new york city um you get a certain intimacy with people so even if it was just me and alice we didn't have the full band you have all these people that are crammed in a room that are quiet and that want to hear what you have to say and um, it's a really nice experience, you know. Did the it's... dogs attend the show too? <laughs> no, they didn't. It's like go... a two dog night instead of three dog night. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's uh, this time of year. You need three dogs to keep warm. So, uh, <laughs> it, uh... <laughs> you know, that's where the two dog night comes from, or three dog night, or one huh. of the dog nights. That's that's how you gauge how cold it is, is how many dogs really? you have to have in your bed to keep warm through the evening. So. <laughs> Uh, yeah, we don't let our dogs sleep in our bed, by the way, but um, we're not here to judge. Um, but yeah, I, it's it's really fun. You you definitely it you build a different play on the songs when it's just two people in a living room, just acoustic guitars, no electric anything. Um, you know, it just has a whole different feel to it, and it's a lot of fun. It's definitely a lot of fun. All right, it's time to give the people what they want, and what they want is music. So, what are y'all playing for us? That's a great question. We're going to play Grand Canyon, which is our slow dance jam. And then w since you like Mama, You're Not Guilty, we'll give that a try yes. without the drums. It may be different, but that's what the people want. They All like right. different. Here's Alice Calvary with Grand Canyon on our Jackson home. <laughs>
every stone begs to be thrown in the depths and seeing the whole way down and there you As the stars find us together Welcome back to our Jackson Home Front Porch Discussions Without the Front Porch. We are here with Aaron and Alice Harden. Now, uh, I got an interesting question to ask you here. In addition to being a touring musician, you also have a passion for health and wellness as well as enjoying running. So my question is, dear God, woman, where do you find the energy? <laughs> deep down. Deep down inside, Jim. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, probably. Your midichlorian count, maybe. Uh, yeah, maybe. My vitamin K levels are high. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, I I do. I like really like to eat well, and I think that um, running has kind of taken a back burner lately because of cold and baby. I'm pregnant. Mm. Ah, hey, yeah. hey, hey. Um, but um, you'll be picking up on that running when that child is born. That's true. That's true. I hope Definitely. somebody found out about that from this podcast. That would be amazing. <laughs> um, I'm actually going into labor right now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just joking. So true. Um, okay. So yeah, I just um, yeah, I don't know. Do I have a lot of energy, Aaron? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, my dad. <laughs> I just eat well, and that gives you good energy. Think think good thoughts and breathe good air. <laughs> breathe good air. I'll have to remember that. Because yeah. the air I've been breathing is just terrible. <laughs> that's, that's <laughs> smells like old sweat socks, and it comes <laughs> off the river. I just need to get some of that good air. Probably. Crack the window. You got to yeah. crack the window. Me too. We have dogs. <laughs> I love it. Okay, favorite childhood cereals. Rapid fire. Let's go. Uh, uh, Grape nuts. Anything with marshmallows in it. Yeah. Grape nuts, <laughs> yeah. Childhood cereal. That teeth. That that cereal could break your jaw. <laughs> I was expecting Not stuff like. <laughs> I was expecting jaw. something like Kaboom or King Vitamin. She came. Out, she pulled a grape nuts lever on me. It was the first thing that came to mind with honey and bananas. Oh, okay. Yeah. At least she dressed it up a little bit. Okay. Uh, favorite cartoon to watch on Saturday mornings when they still had Saturday morning cartoons. Mm. Uh, either G.I. Joe's or Transformers. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles or Wolf X-Men. Ooh, yeah, I like those two, actually. I changed my vote. That's why we're married. Ah, uh, <laughs> coming together. Favorite things in Jackson? Mm, uh, folks, there's some, like, really, really cool folks here in Jackson. People like Joe Garner, the guy that's our homeboy. Yeah, I would say people and uh, Alba Coffee Shop. <laughs> Downtown. Okay, I've seen you guys in photographs for uh, Tulum's Mexican restaurant. What's your favorite restaurant here in town? Well, let's. What's your favorite food <laughs> to eat here in Jackson? Uh, lately, it's been not a Jackson local place. We've been going uh -oh. to Jimmy John's a lot. <laughs> yes. <laughs> is that hot dogs or what is that? Sandwiches? <laughs> yeah, flat meat sandwiches, as Julian Williamson would say. Flat meat. But um, I love. <laughs> <laughs> Whenever I'm really Julian, much, shout out. <laughs> we love Community Cafe and also um, 
uh, the Firefly Cafe. Pour me some juice. Uh, Tiffany Finney's little outfit she's got down there. Lots of hey. healthy, good stuff there. I Firefly like Cafe? Are they in the ship and they go across the galaxy? <laughs> <laughs> I love your um, your science fiction talk. Yeah, after their last gig got canceled, they decided to you know land it and you know make sandwiches or something. Oh, that would be so cool. It's Have, in the lift. Who is that main actor? Oh, uh, Sam. No. What's no. his name? Uh, Castle. Yeah, he's the guy in Castle. Uh, I would love to see him come to the counter going, do you want uh, pastrami or something? <laughs> so many science fiction people are, like, screaming oh, yeah. his name at all of us right <laughs> oh, now. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, can't know everything. Uh, if you go back to podcast number one, Jim and Craig go into Mystery Science Theater 3000 battle for about 25 minutes. Oh, it's yeah. It's incredible. <laughs> Absolutely amazing. Now, Aaron, you're a Niche photographer, market. right? Yes. And, um, well... There's much to talk about there. Maybe we should have you on another podcast. Another yeah, that's time. cool. I, I like to talk about pictures. I th- he's he's one of the best picture takers I know. Yeah, so so you just got to put the box on stuff. We'll so have him know. back here for a <laughs> podcast, and Aaron Harden will flash us with his photography knowledge. Well played, well played. Well, hey, thanks for coming in to our Jackson home today. Y'all are a blessing to our city, and thank you for doing art and marriage and life here with us. And we've got another original song, Mama, here with Alice Calvary on our Jackson home. You Your hands are shaking